What happens when law, business, and life collide? Each week on Lead Council, your host Tom Tona will take a deep dive into topics related to the law, the business of law, and life. There will be insightful discussions with industry insiders, experts, and thought leaders making significant contributions and meaningful differences in their fields of expertise. Tom is the founder and managing attorney at Tona Law. He has been a practicing attorney since 1994 and the leader of Tona Law since it opened in 2001. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with free information on law and the business of law and to give you actionable tools related to each of these areas. Now, here's Tom. This is the last time I'm telling you this. You know we're recording, right? A little T-Swift. Welcome to the Lead Council Podcast. It's your host, Tom Tona. And that person singing who's staying in this is Jules. Jules, what's going on? Hi, guys. I figured you'd like that. I like to tell a swift impression. Thanks. So we have a, a guest today. It's Alicia, Alicia Nadim. Alicia is HR at Tona Law. And this is part four of an eight-part series called Human Resources for Law Firms. And today we're going to be talking about ongoing evaluation with team members and the importance of high-level feedback and communication. Right, Alicia? Right. All right, Alicia, I normally ask people what's going on, but I know that's a pet peeve. So how are you feeling today? <laughs> I'm feeling wonderful today. Feeling Thank wonderful? You. Yes. Ready to that's chat a good it up? question. Right. Yeah, thank you for that question. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. All right, so Alicia, what is ongoing feedback and evaluation versus, let's say, a performance review? Yeah. So a performance review is done on a yearly basis, right? It's pretty much just going over the employee's yearly work quality. Whereas ongoing evaluation, it's a little more, it's a little more catered. It's catered to what is going on in the day to day. So ongoing feedback, it, it complements the performance reviews, but it also allows you to have a slight informal conversation between a manager and an employee. And where should these take place? In the office, out of the office? I mean, it's definitely good to have them out of the office because it does help facilitate a more open forum rather than something that is a little more nerve wracking for the employee. Right. Anytime I feel like anytime you have a desk between you and the person you're talking to, it establishes a hierarchy. That's it makes it less conducive yeah. to the type of feedback that we seek, which is what's the feedback we seek? Juliet, what's the feedback we seek? Uh, that's a trick question. Oh my God. What's the feedback we seek? What am I kind candor. Kind candor. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Alicia, yes. we'll get into what the actual conversation looks like, but what are the benefits of doing quarterly? You said quarterly, right? Quarterly, yep. Yeah. What are the benefits of doing these uh, check-in meetings quarterly versus a once-a-year review, which most law firms are doing them once a year if you're lucky. Yeah. And so... I think I said to you earlier before we turned on the mic that we used to do them once a year. I can't think of how I ever did that. I can't, I can't, un, I can't understand how I ever did it. And Jules, you were there when we were doing them once a year, right? Yeah. Be honest. What kind of, from a, an, an employee perspective or a team mm -hmm. member perspective, on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the best, one being the worst, how good is a once a year, you know, interaction system oh i hated the once a year check-ins i probably to be kind and candor yeah be truthful i'm asking for i truth, would say like a three or a four because i find that when you wait for that one year it's a lot more nerve-wracking on the team member just because you know you know it's a performance review, right? So you're going in and obviously you show up the best you can every year, most assuming. And, you know, it could be nerve wracking because in your head, you're like, okay, 
I think I tried my best, but you're just going through and you're like, what did I do this year that could possibly come up in a negative way in this, in this review? And I think it makes it a lot more stressful on the team member. And we recently had our EOS day with Mitchell York, who was a past podcast guest. And he said that a lot of those yearly performance reviews can kind of feel like you're getting called into the principal's office. And I honestly, I thought it was like a perfect way to describe it. It's like when you're younger in school, getting called into the principal's office, you're like, okay, what did I do? Why am I getting called in here? But these quarterly check-ins, I find, are a lot better in the sense that you can check in with your managers and see how you're doing. And it's easy for you to stay more on track with your goals, the firm's goals, and aligning them. Yeah, I I think that's awesome feedback. I actually love it. I'm not upset by a three out of 10 because we haven't done them that way in a very long time. Mm -hmm. I think I said to Alicia, I'm like, I'm kind of embarrassed to say I ever did them that way because she came over. I don't know what they did at the previous job you were at, but I know that it's just too long. Imagine mm-hmm. waiting once a year to talk to your significant other or your spouse about an issue, whether it's good or bad. Imagine mm-hmm. your spouse waiting once a year to hear, I'm doing a good job or I'm doing a shitty job, right? Yeah. So I think the quarterly check-ins give you like a short burst. I forget how long they said they're supposed to be. Like 30 minutes max. 30 minutes. Like this ain't drama. This is not a soapbox you get on and and you start. It's just basically a check-in. That's what Mm -hmm. it is. And you're right, Alicia. I think you said earlier, it takes the emotion aspect of it and it it calms everything down because it's just a conversation. Yeah. Right? It's a conversation. And even if it's a rough conversation. So let's say for a second... I'm talking to Jules. Jules is doing something that doesn't align with the core values. What is that going to look like, Alicia? What is it going to look like if you're doing that review, you know, that that quarterly review with Jules? So if I was doing a quarterly... Be careful. She's very sensitive, Alicia, so be careful. I mean, that's the beauty of working in HR. You know, you have to be able to learn everyone's personalities, the way they like to, the way they understand information, the way they like to communicate, and also the DISC. That's something that I'm going to be using to help me facilitate these ongoing evaluations. Love it. Love it. I think I'll do good. I think I'll do a decent job. But if I was doing an evaluation on Juliet, you got to start with the good stuff. You can't just go in with the bad things. Um, and they're not necessarily bad things, right? Especially if you're doing them on a on an ongoing basis. It, that's the best part of it. It won't be a level 10 type of situation. It'll probably, it, you know, it may not be the best, but it's it won't get that bad because you're getting to the problem sooner than later. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, be... What's the word? Is it be kind, candorous? Does that make sense? Kind and candorous, yeah. Be kind and candorous. That's the biggest thing when it comes to any type of review or an ongoing evaluation. Be open about your feedback. Be kind because no one's going to take feedback where you're being rude or where you're degrading someone. Yeah, listen. So you you touched on three things that we're going to make a list of action items at the end. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to call them right now. Like, I I want to bring up what you're talking about because attorneys that are listening to this need to know where they can do it better. Most of them, if you're lucky, you're doing it once a year. Stop doing that. Do quarterly check-ins with your team. Individual, one-on-one, take them to lunch. If you're a bigger firm, you have HR, it's got to be quarterly, right? Imagine if you didn't know how you were doing financially. You, You start the year in January. And you don't know how you're going to end up until December 31st. Well, it's the same thing for a team member. They need that feedback. So whether it's me, it's not me normally, or if it's Shanira who's below me, who's doing it with the team leaders, right? Alicia, Jules, and, and everybody else. Or the people below them on the accountability chart. Action step number one, write it down. You got to do it more frequently. It's not fair to the team member. It's definitely going to impact your ability to grow the firm Mm -hmm. and hit the metrics you want to hit if you're not talking to 
Yeah. Right. And I'm not saying we always get it right. Look, I'm not, I, I think I said, to, I said to somebody recently, guy was talking to me. He's like, we should sit down. Or I'm like, stop, man. I'm not your guru. I just, I learned from so many mistakes I've made over the years and there's a better way to do it. There's just a better way to do it. So Alicia, you're spelling it out right now. And I think that's mm-hmm. very wise. You talked about something else to do. Individualized communication. A mark of a high level leadership is talking to the person you're talking to in the language they understand, in the way they understand, right? You can tell me anything. My disc is, I'm like a human callus. I don't have thin skin. If I say something to Jules, depending on the day, <laughs> it might have a different effect. Let's just also, put it that way. Let's also point out. You're the best, Jules. You Tom are the best. would have a way different delivery than Alicia. They both are kind and they both yes. are candorous. But Tom's delivery, you know, not for everybody. Alicia's, <laughs> she, she can kind of work her way around it and still sound so, so soft. She's yeah. more diplomatic. And, and to be honest with you, knowing your own disc, a lot of law firm leaders have my disc, high DI, especially if they're litigators. Hire Let's, someone like Alicia for HR. Yeah, man, I was just going to say, <laughs> no joke. Another action step is having somebody else do the talking for you, mm-hmm. right? I am not the guy that delivers the message like warm and fuzzy. And so for people like Jules who like warm and fuzzy, that's going to be a problem. But Jules and I have also figured out our communication style. You know, it took, and, and it took us years, but we, took us, we're took here. Took us a minute. Took us a minute. So, but individualized communication is so key. You brought up another action step. Cover the good stuff. As lawyers, if you're a lawyer listening to this, when was the last time you complimented a team member by text message on a Friday night or your whole team or said, hey, you did great on this? As lawyers, we're trained to be negative-minded, and therefore, a review can consist of only negative things, and you're going to lose that team member, and it doesn't recognize the person globally. Not it. There's no way. If everybody, if somebody's all bad, then they got to be removed from the team. That's, that's a different segment altogether for this, you know, mm-hmm. termination and that type of stuff. But cover the good stuff, because everybody's got some good stuff. Right. They should anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a great action tip for these types of check ins. Right. Okay. So I do, before we move on, want to highlight something Alicia said too is, you know, you won't have issues that are level 10 issues if you have these quarterly check ins. Right. Like I like to imagine a train wreck. Okay. So (laughs) level 10 (laughs) would be a massive train wreck. But (laughs) <laughs> well, okay, you're going to cut that out. But, but when you say okay. level 10, you're referring to intensity, like right. the level 10 mm-hmm. emotional intensity. And, yeah. and look, that's the other reason to start with the good stuff. Patrick Wilson says you should spend as much time in every review. So if it's a half an hour check-in, 15 minutes, talking about the good stuff somebody's doing. Yeah. Hey, man, great win. Hey, Jules, great newsletter. Great this, great that. All the great stuff that Jules did in the last 90 days And then work into, hey, I'd like to see this as an area of improvement or no areas of improvement, right? Depending on what's going on, but cover the good stuff. That's fantastic, fantastic wisdom. Okay, so back on track for a second. Where were we? So pick it up because we got sidetracked with these action steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of benefits to ongoing evaluations. Like I said before, providing real-time insight of how the employee is doing. It also improves, sorry, it also allows for employee engagement. So especially in law firms, right? Everyone's putting their head down, doing their work. Having ongoing evaluations allows the manager and employee to have more one-on-ones and that in itself will create a great bond and a better relationship with the team overall. Um, Yeah, it it also, uh, on the topic of engagement, you know, law firms, it's hard to stay engaged if you work for a law firm, right? Depending on the position you're playing, like you got to want to be there. And clients will pick up on, especially in the spaces that we're playing, if you're not engaged, right? If you have a non-engaged employee, it's a problem. And so seek to build engagement is another great action tip. 
And, and remind me to tell you a story at the end, because I don't want to interrupt your flow more than I already have. But okay. I want to tell you a story about an email that I got today, this morning at 630, and the response that I gave. So, okay. Are there any other benefits to this ongoing? If, if people haven't already said, yeah, I'm on, I'm going to do this quarterly. Mm-hmm. Are there any other benefits that they, as far as reasons why they should do it? I mean, yes, obviously the ones I stated before, but I don't think many people think of this part of ongoing evaluations. It provides a lot of clarity to the employee as well. Say you're in a situation where an employee is underperforming, right? They have the ongoing evaluations or meeting with their manager. And like I said, they're underperforming. That gives a lot of clarity to the employee as well. It makes, it should kind of get their brain thinking, is this something that's right for me? So it's, it's beneficial for the firm, but it's also beneficial for the person as well, because it allows them to maybe align with something that is, that is more meaningful to them. You just, I mean, man, you just, that hits it out of the park for me. One of the things that I think makes you great at what you do and what makes our culture at this point significantly different is the unemotional view of the relationship. Meaning if it's working, it's because there's alignment between the company and the core values and the culture and the person. And if it's not working, it's because it's, there's not alignment in one or more of the areas that make up our culture, which is, you know, prescribed by six core values, right? Mm -hmm. So I love that because employees that have sat in front of me said, they're so excited to start. I gave notice two weeks ago. They're not emotional about the fact that they quit their last job, but I've seen in settings where there's a separation, extreme emotion, but it's not. We're not saying people are bad in these evaluations. I don't hire bad people, and Lord knows I don't keep bad people if if they're bad. And when I say bad, I mean not... In alignment. Not in alignment or character-wise, right? Like if they're if they're a, just truly a bad person, if that's coming out, they're, they're history. So, but it, it's, I'm not saying anybody's bad or good. We're saying aligned or not aligned. And does it feel aligned to you? That's part of the conversation. Like, do yeah. you think you're in alignment? Yeah. Like with the goals, with the core values, all of that. So I, I really like the way you put that because it, it, that's been our approach. And I think you see, wow, it's, it's just different. It's yeah. different from where you were, you know, where you, where you had last observed, I think. Have you been in settings where it's like a high emotion all the time setting? What do you mean by high emotion? Like level 10 intensity in any of these conversations at prior places that you yeah. had, had exposure to. Yeah. When I worked for the urgent care, it was, it was always, this is a make or break situation. We need to discuss it right now. Okay. And, you know, there was never really that yeah there wasn't any type of quarterly conversations there was nothing like that it's just okay. you're, you're doing something wrong it needs to be addressed and yeah i mean it, it could be wrong those those times come up in our practice too right. if somebody if there's a whiff of toxicity there's usually not an evaluation there's usually termination right like i don't do toxicity mm-hmm. that's just my philosophy i don't care how long somebody's been there i don't care you know what their skill set is. It's just not something I can have in the organization. So, okay. So any other benefits to these, this quarterly cadence and kind candor feedback? Well, there's definitely a monetary, monetary benefit, you know, at the end of the year, if you are meeting on a quarterly basis, everything's going well, you're aligned with the goals. There's, probably some money at the end of the year that you're going to get because you met all those goals. So it's a win-win, I feel like, at this point, meeting every quarter so, into the rainbow. Uh, uh, up until now, we focused on, you know, there's like an underlying tone of, well, we're going to be, there's, there's some corrective type of element to these check-ins, but it's not like that, right? So let's tell the audience that's listening to this very clearly. These quarterly check-ins allow you to recognize your superstars and your rock stars. And my recommendation, and Alicia's seen me do this, Jules, you've seen me do it, is 
There is no set time frame for raises and bonuses if somebody's a rock star or a superstar. And doing the quarterly check-ins, along with compensating people the right way, makes your firm pretty bulletproof from poachers, recruiters who have the audacity to literally call your office on your phone lines and try to poach your people, Mm -hmm. right? I don't worry about that. I sleep really good at night. (laughs) I sleep good at night. I don't worry about it. Why? I know my people. I know how much I pay my people. I also know that I'm the guy that walks around is like, great job. You're walking around like, great win. Awesome. Couldn't have done this without you, right? Jules is like the cheerleader. She's kind of cartwheeling through the office every time there's a win announced. I would cartwheel if I could. You can do it. I Come on. I believe in you. Don't do it in the office stuff. You get hurt. It's workers' comp. So, so, <laughs> so I think that it's for the benefit of the company too, right? If I wasn't meeting with you as regularly as I did in your first 90 days, Alicia, or, or 120 days, I would not have realized the gold that I have sitting in that seat, that bag of cash that you are, which is, and I mean that in a complimentary way, but like, <laughs> but meeting with you and seeing you for the value you were bringing, I hope you don't mind me sharing, but I gave you a bonus. I don't know, 125 days in, yeah. just randomly like, hey man, I think you deserve more. I, I've tracked your talent. I've looked at the market. But what I did was I was able to sleep at night knowing I don't have to worry about HR. Nobody's poaching her, right? So, sure. <laughs> so look, I think that the ongoing feedback has to happen. It gives you clarity and, and are you on track for your goals? And then is the employee on track for their goals? And is there a bonus at the end of the year for performance, right? You're not waiting for the end of the year to do it. There's one more benefit that I think that you're aware of. So tell us what that is. One more benefit? Yeah. Continual assessment and, and ongoing communication. That's what the, are you saying that's what the benefit is? Okay. So tell her what okay. the benefit is. It yeah, deepens, all right. So uh, there's one more benefit to me and that is that it deepens the connection and it's, it's not just transactional, mm-hmm. right? Transactional is you guys are cogs in the wheel. You work for me. I pay you. You do the work. People don't want to feel like that. Mm-hmm. right? People want to feel appreciated. People want to feel treasured. You know, when, when I get people like you two, it's my obligation to make sure you know that it, even with all the joking, Jules, right? Do you know how much I value you? Of course. You tell me all the time. <laughs> oh, Alicia, how many times a day am I like, you're my secret weapon now. You're my secret weapon. Yeah, right. I, I definitely feel special here. And but but do you think I'm making it up? Am no, I bullshitting you not guys? Not at all. No. Right. It's genuine. Right. In my own way of doing it, and yeah, I joke around with you two a lot, but it's it deepens a connection where, again, I get asked all the time, "Don't you worry about poaching?" No, man. No, I don't worry about it. And and listen, on the off chance somebody's gonna end up leaving for another five thousand dollars because a poacher got them. Pretty much, I probably am okay with that. So, Alicia, when we talk about the meeting that you're talking about, it's a half an hour meeting, Mm -hmm. we're using a tool called the People Analyzer, right? Correct. And that's basically two different analyses in one simple form, correct? Correct. Okay. So, to determine if somebody is in the, the right person, what do we look for? We look for alignment with the core values. And so, on the form, we write the six core values out. Mm -hmm. And then how do we score them? We score them using three ratings. One is plus, which means alignment with the core values most of the time. The next is plus minus, which is alignment with the core values some of the time. And minus, which means that there's alignment rarely. Okay. So... And what I like about that, and we're actually simplifying our process because one, I don't believe, I believe that's just management side. I don't know that EOS says you should get them to rate themselves. So that's something we probably should get clarity on. But I also like that it doesn't need to be a written thing like we used to do, right? It's just plus, plus, minus, minus. We'll talk about it. We move on. So with regard to the scoring, So the bar, you talked about the bar before. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. well, five out of six of our core values has pluses, right? Right. And then one, which is innovation and improvement. There are certain positions where that would not apply. So the bar would be plus minus. We want to see innovation and improvement some of the time, right? We'd like to see mm -hmm. some hints of innovation and improvement, looking to personally improve, professionally improve. If someone is below the bar, so you have a plus, let's say it's people first and it, the bar is a plus. They have mm -hmm. to be people first. And if they're not, we need to have one. Three. Yeah. We have to have three examples stating why we rated it a plus minus or a minus. Right. And I like that because that's fair. And not only that, they have to be written up that way, meaning we dealt with it at the time. This was a deviation. It's written. It's in the file. It's discussed at the time it occurs. It, you know, it could be an email, it could be whatever. And then during these quarterly check-ins, then you can rate them that. If you have not done it in writing, what's the rule? Doesn't count. Right. You can't rate them below the bar if you have not three documented instances of the misalignment with the core values. And I, I like that portion a lot because one, it says that the second you see that misalignment, you have to mention, you have to bring that up. And then that's that documentation. But it's good because obviously everybody is allowed off days. Every There's just general human error. Everybody is allowed to have a bad day. And sometimes when you're a bad day, you might not be the best people person. But I think the fact that management has to kind of be like, hey, heads up, today like was not your best day. It kind of allows the person to reflect and just check themselves. And then it also, you know, it allows those three separate incidences because, you know, somebody could have an off day, but then be 100% the rest of the time. So right. I think, like you said, Tom, it just makes it very fair. It's fair. It's fair to the individual, mm -hmm. but it's not fair if you're not doing it that way, right? And you want to try to be fair. You want to always try to be even keeled and fair in your approach. It should never be an emotional type of response. So, okay. So you get past the right person. Juliet's the right person. Now we want to figure out, is she the right person for that seat? Right. And right seat, the way I understand it, is the skill set, the desire, mm -hmm. and the ability to do the position, right? Gets it understands what's required of the job. GWC, gets it, wants it, capacity to do it, right? So, and that's part of the people analyzer because they could still be the right person but not be in the right seat. If they don't get it, they don't understand the job. Some people don't want it, so they shouldn't be in that seat. And capacity, which is physical, emotional, mental, intellectual, and skill capacity, right? The right seat is... They get this job. Like Jules gets marketing. You get HR. You want to do HR. And you were born to do HR. So you have the capacity, skill set wise and everything else, both of you to do this job, right? So that's why your people analyzers would be pluses across the board. That's why the GWC would be across the board. So those check-ins with you guys would look like, hey, this is going awesome. Last 90 days fantastic. Let's do the same thing again. But that's also why we have so much momentum in your seats, right? Because you are the right people in the right seats, right? I just want to, well, I did have one other thought about the once a year review because Jules brought something up and I wrote it down. Doing it once a year. What if somebody's having a really bad month? Now you're doing a review based upon what you've observed in the last 30 days but that's out of character for the person. And is that fair to the person, right? And, and I think it could be very detrimental to the organization. You don't want to make a decision based upon a 30-day increment over a 12-month period. What you want to do is say, take a global picture, have a conversation, and, but doing it quarterly allows that cadence where, oh, they were just having a bad month. They're back on track been a great 60 days after that 30 day period and the next quarter fine everything's good so you can still end the year very strong and have all of these dialogues going on 
So I just, I, I think that, that was something I wanted to bring up because we used to see that all the time. If somebody was having a bad month, you don't want to do the review, their yearly review during that month. Yeah. Right? You want to take the global picture, which doing it in four bites allows you to do quarterly. Right? So since we've been doing it this way and you came on board, in your experience, how are you finding it, Alicia, in terms of how we do it now versus what you were used to doing? Yeah, I think how it's done now it's kind of makes everything foolproof. You, know, you can't you can't fail in reality with this because both sides are getting so much clarity, whether it be the person, you know, just getting that feedback that they're doing well in their role or getting that feedback that they're not doing well, what they should change. It also creates clarity on the management side, making sure that the goals are being reached and things are heading in the right direction. It also, I could tell you, as, you know, from somebody who's at the head of the firm, is what it reveals to you, to me, and when you guys report these reviews up to me if, as you're meeting with people. And this goes for international team members too, right? The, the assistance that we have overseas in the Philippines and in India. It, it, if Jules comes to me, she's like, I got to tell you, these two people in the Philippines that are under me are so good. Well, I know I got to hold on to them because the Philippines being crushed right now with influx of demand for external labor. And I'm making sure I'm treating them as good as I'm treating everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. We send them swag. We give them financial increases. We keep our thumb on the pulse of the financial bands in the Philippines, and then we give out raises and bonuses based on that. So it makes it highly systematized. And for the first time in the 30 years I've been practicing, I sleep really well at night. I have, I can't, I think I said it to you, Alicia, I can't remember the last time we had turnover that wasn't positive turnover. Right. Right. And that just means, okay, this person wasn't the right person in the seat. And now we can look for a better fit. And that person goes on and finds a better career fit, right? Exactly. But even that being said, in the last, you know, five years, 10 years, you know, I haven't been poached. Nobody's been poached from us, right? And that, that says something about what we're doing. So as that Head of HR right now, are you planning on doing anything to further systematize this process? Yeah. So now that we've, well, now that we have a better grasp on EOS and, you know, we'll be able to roll it out to the rest of the team, I'm looking to conduct those quarterly conversations with the rest of the team. I'll be relying heavily on Paylocity, which is the, the HR system that we use for the firm. So we already have it digitized. Obviously, we have it all on our um, on our cloud system, but this will make the process even more easier for me to just directly send it to whatever team members I'm assigning it to, to their managers, and then also create a log where they'll be able to document their own information and resort back to whenever they need to. It's kind of like a a workplace dream board where you have all your goals, where you have your, you know, all the information that you need to make sure you're on track for your yearly goal, for your personal goals and for your professional goals. That's awesome. And my understanding, by the way, is that the quarterlies are one-on-ones with their direct manager, mm -hmm. right? So it's not going to be you conducting every right. one. You'll have your own, but it's, it's, the quarterlies, at least my understanding, is that the direct manager does them quarterly. It's a half an hour outside of the office. You go get a cup of coffee, you have lunch or whatever, and they do it there. Mm -hmm. And then they report back to you on that, right? Because there's no way you're doing 20. Yeah, more like of being able to, yeah, being able to streamline the process for everyone. Obviously, I, this is the first time we're doing it. So right. creating that opportunity for everyone. Right. The, so you're so going to create the system. You're going to teach everybody how to do it. And, mm -hmm. and then we'll roll it out that way. That's awesome. I think that's it. So I, I did want to talk about that one story. Jules, you had something? Well, I was going to remind you about the email. 
Yeah, so there was an email sent out today on one of the listservs I belong to, and the person said, several firms are targeting my talent and poaching from me. So I'm reading this over coffee, and everybody's jumping in. Well, you got to get them gym memberships. I'm like, gym memberships? Then, then they're like, you got to look at your pay, right? So I, I really start to think about it, and I'm like, you got to work on your culture. I said, this is, you cannot fix this in an email. And it's taken me and this law firm since 2001 when I opened it to get to this point where it's pretty bulletproof, our culture. It's pretty bulletproof because we protect it relentlessly. But I said, you got to start. Do you have core values? And then are you, are they real core values? Are you living the core values? Are you enforcing the core values and protecting the core values, right? And then, yeah, you got to look at, salary bans. Do you have salary bans? Like we have, right? We read a whole book on compensation <laughs> systems. We create salary bans for every position. Do you have jobs? Do you have all of these things? And I said, this was my advice. I said, look, it's, you're asking for input. Here's my input. You cannot solve this in an email chain. You need to go to a room somewhere away from your office with a pad and look in the mirror because them leaving is your business speaking to you and the market speaking to you, right? People don't leave if you make it a workplace where they don't want to leave, right? right? So most of the time they won't leave for just money unless it's a lot of money. And even then, if you created the right environment, I had somebody come to me, said to me the following, I love it here. I don't want to leave. A recruiter contacted me the other day. They say my value is this and they can get me a job offer generated on this. I say, give me 24 hours. I really appreciate you coming to you because had you gone on the interview and entertained the offer, got an offer, I would have said goodbye. But I love the way the person approached me. Kind, candor. It wasn't trying to hold me hostage. And I did my salary data. I said, Next day, you know what? You're right. I'm going to give you a raise. That was the end of it. That was the end of it. And that's the right way to approach conversations, right? Don't just leave. Don't go entertain an offer unless you're in a place that doesn't have all of these things in together, right? You got to have this entire system that you're spelling out and you're helping us build and solidify every day. You got to have that. So, you know, the market's always talking to you, always talking to you. Your employees are talking to you whether you know it or not. So they talk to you when they leave. Good Lord, if there's an exodus, that means something's wrong. Something's wrong with your company. You got you to gotta be willing to entertain that. Or you're not paying them enough, right? What we do, we'll talk about in the compensation model. But, you know... I know my meticulous data on salaries and I've, we've gotten it right thus far many, many, many times over on new hires, yeah. retentions, and all of that stuff. So if you don't have anything else to add, I, I think that this was a great episode. You know, again, this is all important mm -hmm. and you can't manage what you don't measure. And mm -hmm. these quarterly check-ins that you talk about and the dialogues and the scoring and the tools that we use, and we gave a lot of actionable advice again, all allow us to measure it, which makes our team very profitable, right? So I appreciate all the input, Alicia. And, you know, as always, you've just given us a ton of knowledge in the HR space. So Jules, did you have anything else? Nope. I think Alicia covered it all. All right. What about you, Alicia? You all good? Yeah, I think, I think that was pretty much all of it. All right. Yeah. All right. Listen to us anywhere that podcasts are distributed. Share this with a lot of your lawyer friends because Lord knows we all need help on the HR mm -hmm. front. I know I did for about 20 years and, you know, it's probably the last 10 years that I really focused on it and it took me about 10 years to get to this point. So if anybody listening to this is just starting out, start now and you won't have to wait 10 years. This is a, all free. It, there's all free resources for this type of stuff. So awesome job, ladies. Thank you. And till next time. Yep. Thank Bye. you. Bye.